Uh, hello, everybody out there in Game Cola Land. It's another episode of the Game Cola Podcast. Yeah, and uh, we got some fun plans up in here today. My name is Zach Rich. I write nothing for at least two months now, but I'll probably get back as soon as I can find time to write something. All right, I'm uh, I'm Justin Lashinsky. I write uh, reviews and modus operandi. I'm Chris Porter, and uh, I write whatever I'm not lazy enough to not write, whatever that means. Okay, so we're going to talk about video games, and lots of it. Um, we were discussing topics before we started recording, but I don't remember any of them. So, uh, what are you guys up to? Let's, uh, let's talk about what we're playing first, because I like talking about what we're playing. What are, what are you guys playing? For RPGs? For anything! Uh, right now I'm playing, uh, Persona, actually. Or aren't you a little girl? Next! <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Borderlands. A lot of Borderlands right now. A little bit of Little Big Planet. Or aren't you a gun nut? Next! Little Big Planet is notoriously violent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing Borderlands, so and that has, like, 94,972 guns. That is true. Each. So you're a gun nut. You know, but, they, the, but they all do the same thing, kill people. Pretty much. We, every gun has a different past, a different history, uh, uh, but they're all made for one goal. Yeah. They, they do have guns to heal people. <laughs> that is, uh, that's an out there, that's a real out there thing about Borderlands. Really? Yeah, they have healing guns. You just shoot the hell out of your teammates and it heals them. With special like guns. Like gun <laughs> from uh, Team Fortress 2? Yeah, I was going to say, like, the medica. Yeah, a little bit. Huh. Yeah, I haven't really given Borderlands a fair shot because there's so many games I had no time to play lately. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's like Fantasy Star Online if it were some kind of Western pulp comic. Okay. Wait, Fantasy Star Online? I got... I have Fantasy Star Universe on my 360, and I never felt like paying the money to actually buy the online component to it. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do that. Yeah... I mean, the single player was horrible in itself. The only good yeah. thing about it is that you got like a hundred points for like every two chapters you did for gamer score. Yeah, the single player was so piss poor. I really couldn't bring myself to take that leap of faith and pay ten dollars a month for my hunter license. And so uh, I said goodbye to it. Okay. Oh. The voice acting. I'm pretty sure. I haven't heard voice acting that bad in the video games. It's probably the original Perfect Dark. <laughs> Yeah, I've been really? playing that, that too, and that is really a gem. Oh, please do not kill me. Um, no, no, there, I mean, there's, there's worse. There's way worse, like like Shenmue. Shenmue probably has the worst, <laughs> worst, notoriously worst voice acting in all video gaming. See, Shenmue, I never had a Dreamcast, and I've actually never actually played a Dreamcast. Even, I didn't have that many friends that owned it, obviously, since like that was the biggest problem with it, it didn't sell that very well. But, um... I know there's a lot of games that I played ever since they were re-released, like Crazy Taxi, Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, blah, 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 uh, Ikaruga, especially, but the Dreamcast is just something I've jumped out on. But Shemei, Shem, Shemune, Shimare, Takagi, sounds like a really great game from what I've heard. It was back in the day. Now, like, I, I just replayed it now, and it's, um... The luster <laughs> it goes away. Yeah, it doesn't really stand the test of time, especially like <laughs> when, like, what is it? The second half of like the first game, where you know Rio is pretty much. And they don't even cut. Like, they have this little. If you buy Shenmue Two for the Xbox, they have like a DVD of somebody just playing through the first game, and they didn't really? actually cut. Yeah, they didn't actually cut up, cut out him going around town saying, "Do you know where I could find some sailors? Do you know where <laughs> sailors hang out?" <laughs> there's, there's a good. Five, three minutes of that. And I'm just like, really? That's the one thing you don't you you cut out a few of the other things, but you didn't cut out like the most notoriously bad like sequence from it. That sounds a lot more like Chowaniki, like, or like passed out drunk woke up the next morning. He's like, yo, oh, I missed the finish. Done. <laughs> uh, it, it, you probably find it on YouTube if you look hard enough. But <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got a very funny form split question. Uh, <laughs> I'm in uh, tech rehearsals for a production of Bartown right now. And, uh, Ooh. 
actually my only day off until the run of the show actually starts. So this will be like the last day I have a life until next Monday. So, uh, cool. Spending it with you, freaks. Great. We uh, love you. You guys want to talk about the the DSi XL or the what is it, the DS 3D or whatever? 3DS. I want to talk about how much I want to like drag the person out to the street that thought 3D televisions were a good idea and shoot them in the testicles. <laughs> yeah. I went yeah. to see Avatar 3D, and I had to close my eyes for at least 20 minutes of the movie simply because I could not, my eyes could not take that. I, it, it, I mean, 3D sounds like a great idea in theory, but in practicality, it's just annoying. And that's why that's why it works in waves. Like every thirty years, humankind says, "You know, it'd be great, three D." And then after about five years, we're like, "You know what? Maybe we should go back to two D. This uh, this is kind of annoying." I mean, the thing that like HD revolutionized television, and now they're looking for the next big revolution, and they say that it's going to be three D. And the idea of having it without glasses could be fascinating, but I'm not entirely certain if everyone's eyesight is ready for that kind of thing. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. have to work on that. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people having problems with like motion, motion sickness while watching 3D stuff. But no, no, I still think the future is in like virtual reality, full body, you know, enhancement suits. <laughs> Where are you? The nineties? At least the future of internet porn. Yeah, at least the future of internet porn. Anyways, yeah. Like point of view bullshit. Yeah, well, like sort of full virtual reality kind of thing. Because the 3D, you, you're still sitting. In a room, you know, watching a static screen, you know, jump all over the jump all over the place now at at you. That's that'll cause motion sickness. But full virtual reality, not so much. Wait, so let's talk, let's go back to the porn argument. If you say that three D reality in terms of porn, if that ever happened, the human race would die out because nobody would want to have sex with each other anymore. Now, actually, as someone who has seen three D porn, I I I used to own a video store. My family did, and I went to Wait. a video convention. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Stop. <laughs> Rewind. As okay. somebody who's seen a 3D porn before, how do you say that sentence and not expect everyone to question your motives and everything you're ever going to do again? Fair enough. Uh, I have seen that, and I can tell you some, you might think, some people might think it sounds, oh, that sounds kind of neat. Uh, then you realize what sticks out, and, you know, it gets a little creepy. Wait! Not, yeah. Stop! You were watching freaky porn I and didn't expect the you know what to start sticking out of the screen. I, you don't think you about it. There. You Very don't nice. really think about it. Yeah. Oh my you're, God. you're just like, oh, three D. You're just like, oh man, three D. That's so cool. And then you then you go see it. And you're like, oh man, this is this is kind of awful. <laughs> this is kind of traumatic. This is traumatic. Not really I'm, I'm just glad they didn't hook up any kind of, like, squirting mechanism. Right, okay. Am I taking this podcast now too I really far? Wish those days were back. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should move to another another direction. <laughs> so, uh, new video game. Let's go. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, video game. Ties. Let's talk about that. Custer's Revenge. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God. Oh, God. What did I get myself back Okay, um, what were we talking about? <laughs> the 3DS. Uh, yeah. Wasn't there screenshots of that posted? Let me see. I think there were pictures. There is there is a kind of simulation video out right now, and it looks it pretty much just looks like you're looking into a diorama. I remember. Wait, what the fuck is Pokemon Black and White? Oh no. Yeah, that's oh, pretty much what I said. Oh, oh no! Are you, are you gonna are you gonna keep are you gonna say something or keep? I'm, I'm trying Just to process this. They're a going few more from, O's. They're going from red and blue to gold and silver to ruby and sapphire to diamond and pearl, and now it's black and white. Is this gonna be like the last generation of Pokemon? You can't go any further than black and white. <laughs> No, I think they're going to have to start consulting Crayola and have, like, macaroni and cheese and burnt sienna. Oh, yeah. Hot pink and yeah, Pokemon yeah. flying Oceanic green. green. <laughs> Oceanic green. Yeah. 
That's disgusting. Um, well, that also begs the question, what will the third title be? Pokemon Grey? Maybe. The neutral theme. Yeah. That's the thing I can think of. Well, that's the thing, like, where, like, was the last generation of Pokemon, it didn't have, they revealed, like, the god of Pokemon. You know, like, where, where do you go okay. from there? What do you, what do you possibly have? Are we gonna have different Pokemon of different religions? Like, <laughs> press X Maybe there'll be, like, like a man go? behind the man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you, what do you, what are you gonna do after that? So, Pokemon should probably have just, you know, I, I think it's time to stop. Like, there's probably some Pokemon executive crying himself to sleep over this. <laughs> Most. Most likely. Yeah. Oh, here's something important. Uh, last week to play Xbox One games on Xbox Live. Oh, I thought that was a few weeks ago. No, uh, Xbox One games go offline at Thursday. So this is indeed the very last weekend to play, uh, let's see, like any of them. Halo 2, Crimson Skies, Star Wars Battlefront, what? Conquer. What? Why are they doing this? Why are they, like, like no, like, even if I have a disc, I can't play Xbox games? No, what's happening well, is you that... Well, you can, it's not online. Oh. There are any support to play the games online, so that there's limitations to Xbox Live right now because they still support the old hardware. As soon as they don't support the hardware anymore, they can do things. Like, the only thing that's really heard about right now is expanding your friends list beyond 100 friends, but Microsoft says that there's plenty of things they can do now to Xbox Live now that they're shutting down the old system. So you can still throw, you could like still it's, throw it's, in Halo 2 and play the single player, or like in split screen, but you can't go on Xbox Live with it anymore. I'm gonna have to like, play a few rounds of Halo 2 tonight, I think. Well, when it comes right down to it, whenever I popped in Battle or, uh, Battlefronts, it's not like oh. it was really bustling with people, so. Yeah. It's really not a huge loss. I think Halo 2 is still like, I think right now you'll find, probably find a lot of people playing it. Especially like, it's the last chance to play it. So a last so hurrah. Yeah. Last hurrah in there. I don't know, I, I might jump on later tonight if that's the case. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I may give it a shot. For all time's sake, I remember, yeah. I remember reading that Monkey's going to do something big for Halo 2 for the last few days. Okay. So, uh, hmm. get on it. This, like, better be posted, like, soon, because this, this is all going to be obsolete talk. We post it in, like, a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Let's see, what else is in the news? Green Day Rock Band's full track list. All 47 songs for Green Day Rock Band have been revealed. Let's see. It's the entire okay. Dookie album. The entire American Idiot album. Uh, most of the 21st Century Breakdown album that hasn't been released as downloadable content. And uh, a few songs from Warning, Nimrod, and Insomniac. Oh wait, wait. So hold up. Is is I hope you have the time. Is I hope you have your time in the life. Is that going in there? Because yes, like, that every, is in there. Good like, every in every there. housewife like from here <laughs> to like Toronto is going to be playing that over and over and over again. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just hoping for a lot from the uh, pre eyeliner era. I'll be okay with that. Um, I mean, there's a <laughs> yeah. few things. Googie's 1994. Uh, Nimrod's 97. Yeah. But most of it is like. like American Idiot was the beginning of that, and then, like, 21st Century yeah, Breakdown is on there. Cool. I actually didn't mind 21st Century Breakdown as much. I like it better than American Idiot, but that's just me. I've never but cared much for the one band stuff. rock bands. What? Sorry, go ahead. I mean, what I think this one... What? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I can't believe there's a musical about American Idiot now. Like, is it a musical? I mean, it's a musical. It's on Broadway right now. Huh. Huh. There's a lot of weird musicals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of musicals these days are just adaptations. I mean, uh, yeah. Dirty Rock Scoundrels, The Strike Musical, which is actually really, really good. I was pleasantly surprised by that. But, yeah, um, Young Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Young Frankenstein, yes. I mean, because Broadway, like, in order to bring people into it all, you need adaptations. You need names and things that people know. When Disney start, when Beauty and the Beast came onto Broadway, like there was a sudden resurgence of interest in uh, music theater and everything. And with like yeah. Neil Patrick Harris on the scene now, MBH like revitalized American music theater. He's got a production of he's uh, directing a production of Rent on Broadway with um 
Vanessa Higgins, the lead from uh, High School Musical. And oh, yes, I've, I've seen her that. vagina. I'd be upset about that, but it's NPH, and I trust the lead. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what would NPH yeah. do? What would NPH do if he were here for it? He'd write in his computer diary. He'd write it. But, uh, yeah. So that's the Broadway news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> On to our game <laughs> section. <laughs> Um, we got technology, Broadway. Yeah. Well, and we're circling the drain around video games. We'll get there eventually. Talk about porn. Talk about. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> Super Mario <laughs> Galaxy Two. Mario Galaxy Two is that? That's May, right? That's next month. Oh my god! I've um, heard nothing. Um, yeah, I've heard nothing. Keep forgetting that it's coming out. I think um, Nintendo is just taking a strict "it's fucking Mario" approach. Yeah, yeah pretty I much. I think you'll start hyping up like the second we are done talking about it. <laughs> like, yeah, two. Yeah, maybe even two days before it. Just you know, not just 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 like the words Mario. You know, buy it. <laughs> buy it like, now. Okay. Yeah. My good little sheep, we will. But yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Smooth flowing podcast. Yeah. 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 Easy um, from the edit, I guess. Oh, Halo Reach beta next month. Is anybody else? Uh, does anyone else have ODFSD? Ooh, no, I do not. But I know, I know somebody who is, and I'm gonna go over to his house when the beta when the beta drops and pretty much play the shit out of it. See, the nice thing for me is that um, I'm done with classes before the end of the month, so I'll be home, and uh, my best friends and I will just like live in their basement for a few days to play the Reach beta. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what's going on with me. That's going to be awesome. I'm really excited for it. I'm very bummed for it. Uh, based on what I've seen, uh, just the whole, uh, the, 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 the beta trailer that we saw that had, like, the assassination, like, detailing the game types. Um, and just all the more information a bunch of games popping out at us. They just revealed, um, the maps that we're playing on. Uh, there's four maps in the beta, two of them for Slayer matches, with two others for a pair of the new game types. Uh, so that's ex- That'll be next part. Yeah, I gotta go check out. I don't know, it seems like they're really, I don't know, it seems like they're really gonna go all out. I mean, I'm still interested in what the single player will be, but... I'm always more interested. I'm not, like, I never play Halo alone. If I'm playing the campaign, I'm always playing Nick Claw, but if I'm playing Halo by myself, then it's online with no headset on because I hate people on Xbox Live. Um, I think it's a game that needs to be enjoyed with other people. Um, because people on Xbox Live are 12 year old psychopaths that don't know how to behave themselves in public. You mean you don't want to have your, uh, sexuality and, and ethnicity questioned? Um, I would like to have the record show that I am a straight white <laughs> I mean, I know I'm the music theater kid, but uh, I like the boobies and the badgies just as much as the next guy. Jesus. Hey, we had a full-scale conversation about 3D porn, okay? <laughs> That's true. It's true. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Everything is up for grabs now. Um, NES cart harmonica now conveniently on sale. Wow, this is pretty. Uh, this is pretty awesome. Let me send this link to you guys. Um, I, I saw that one earlier. I think it was on Kotaku. Yeah. Uh, just send it to you. This is actually pretty fascinating. Uh, about two years ago, a guy turned. How to for turning any chosen to a harmonica. If you like the tools, he's made one yourself and it's for sale for 25 bucks. That'd be pretty awesome. Be like jamming out, then all of a sudden you bring out the Mario Bros. Duck Hunt and you start playing it like a harmonica. Pretty cool. It's pretty clever. It's amazing yeah. what people can do. It's pretty clever, yeah. Do you get to pick what card it's made out of? Because I'd like to be kind of a jerk and pick a rare one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not going to cost you 25 bucks. Oh, <laughs> Get, like, the stadium events card and be like, hey, pick yeah. this tool harmonica. 
some collector on the street will be like crying and like pleading on you to stop it, stop it for the love of God! What are you doing? I would, I would yeah. go to a convention. I would go to a convention, stand outside, and play it just to watch the tears flow. <laughs> They'd be like, "That's not a real card. You don't know what it's like." Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really cool though. We'll say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Now they just they can just make an ocarina out of an ocarina of time card. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of almost got the shape a little a little heat applied to shape it a little bit more. I could see it happening. I don't. I'm just a, I'm a visionary. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, you get to work on that. Somebody gets this guy money. Well, uh, uh, this guy needs money. I don't care what it's for. Um, yeah. Uh, is there anything else interesting? I don't know, I wanted to talk about, I remember you had that article, uh, Christian, with that, uh, nostalgia, or like, uh, what is it? Uh, the Castlevania red, one? Red, yeah, red, Retro does not equal good. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I'm, um, I, I totally agree with you on that, like, uh, especially playing a lot of games now, it's just... It seems so good, you know, back in the day, but especially now, like, uh, Shenmue, for example, that I just played through, like, it, it seems so revolutionary, but I played through now, it's, uh, well, embarrassing to say that I actually liked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to get caught up in, oh, Castlevania, that has some brand recognition right there, that is a great game, everyone says so, but then you play it again. It just moves like a sack of shit. It's it's really not very good. It requires precise controls, and it doesn't have any. Yeah. I didn't even like it then, actually, to be honest. It was just... It, I always thought he played kind of kind of choppy. But I always felt bad saying I hate Castlevania. <laughs> I, I, I came out of that closet. Castlevania's... I, I didn't mind Castlevania, but it, like I don't, I don't really like people who are like, you know, oh, game, games these days are... Not as good as the ones, you know, in X year. Games these days were never this good than they're on the SE NES. You know, so much yeah. better back then. But that's exactly <laughs> that's why I started that article because I yeah. see on the internet so much like, oh man, Portal sucks. I just want to play Bubble Bobble all goddamn day. Yeah. Like, anyone who says Portal sucks right. could get off the internet right now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you want to That that's a complete straw man. I've never seen anyone say Portal sucks. But. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see too much. I see so much dwelling on the past. It's like they're gonna wait twenty years till anyone admits any games this generation is good. Which yeah. isn't to say old games are bad, but it's just they're not all masterpieces, as some would say. Except for yeah, Snowboard that's... Kids. <laughs> Except for Snowboard Kids. Except for Snowboard Kids. No, it's gonna be like in twenty years, like man, this generation with super awesome kitty death sucks, man. You know, games were real back when Harvest Moon was out. Like, that was a true joke. <laughs> I pine for that harvesting already. Yeah. My sister is obsessed with Harvest Moon. She's like, she got, she, um, she had the GameCube one, Wonderful Life, and, um, she basically stole my GameCube for about half a year just to play Harvest Moon. I'm happy with that. I have to admit, I am playing quite a bit of Tree of Tranquility. I am, I am gay as the Dickens, though. That's that's not a good. Cause Harvest Moon kind of promotes mature relationships. I mean, all you have to do is you know give you know give this one girl like diamonds every single day of her life, and then you know, she'll suddenly become your wife. Well, you find it's me not... a woman where that wouldn't work. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, boy, <laughs> take it, boy. Mature relationships does not promote good good marriage. Uh, oh, one other thing, um, side, uh, side stepping from video gaming for a second, do you guys know about, That's um, a first for us. <laughs> <laughs> off topic, I never knew, um, do you guys know Red Letter Media? Yes. Yes, yes. have you, you guys have watched the, uh, Attack of the Clones review? Yeah. Oh, Holy I have, uh, I didn't watch that one yet, but I saw the first one. Um... For those of you not in the know, Red Letter Media is a production company um, who specializes in making uh, very, very long reviews of science fiction movies. 
And um, they got their claim to fame last December with a 70-minute Phantom Menace review. And just last week posted a 90-minute review of Attack of Clones. And it's not only... It's done in a deadpan manner by this character named Mr. Plinkett, who's implied to be... Well, not really implied, but is a sexual deviant who, like, beats and rapes and murders women. And uses this really monotone, like, creepy, demented voice. But all the while, it's probably one of the hardest pieces of film critique that you could ever watch, because, honestly, I can't look at those movies the same way as ever again. It, it's just amazing what he's done to it, all the while being extremely oh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, this is really very, funny and, it, and really intelligent arguments about it too. It's, it, they're yeah. really good. It's oh, yeah. it's a lot more entertaining than the movies that they're critiquing, and it's truly a must watch for anyone that's into science fiction or humor at all. Um, <laughs> like, don't bring it up at a party unless you want to sit around for ninety minutes. But like, if you have nothing to do, definitely look up Red Letter Media. They're on Twitter. They're on Facebook. Ah, they're just absolutely brilliant. Their Avatar review was really good, too, and I, I did not like Avatar. I like the special effects. I did not like the movie at all, and I think one of the I happiest movies in my I think uh, one of the best things was seeing the Hurt Locker win Best Picture a few months ago. Cause I, I didn't just, even care about the Hurt Locker. Yeah. I just wanted to see Avatar lose. <laughs> I do I mean, not want the 3D Fern Gully to win. Game, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, just, everyone wants to see that. So yeah, um, so yeah, uh, check that out if you have time to look at it. Uh, don't forget, Zach, plug, plug, plug. Adam, plug, plug, plug. Yeah. Hey, if you're in the Buffalo area, go see the U- University at Buffalo's production of Bar Town. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> straight faced. Of course, it's straight faced. I'm an entertainer. Very good. Uh, um, what else? Uh, you guys read 8-Bit, 8-Bit Theater? Anyone read 8-Bit Theater? Oh, uh, I haven't read that for how, the god is how long. <laughs> but I've read uh, it. Uh, well, it's, it's wrapping up, it's ending. Uh, really? Brian Clevenger said there's about two epilogue strips left, and that will be the end of 8-Bit Theater. Oh, man. Yeah, I gotta read it, uh, I gotta catch up. It's actually, it's... It's probably one of my favorite comics on mine. I mean, it's just so clever in the writing. They just did one of the, like, not to give away a plot point or anything, but there's a joke that's made in one of the last comics that is a brick joke all the way from, like, the 12th strip. So this is a thousand comics, and, like, ten years later, and they give the punchline to a joke from the 12th comic. <laughs> that is I like clever. That. I like that. Right. Wow. That makes um, me want to read it now. Yeah. If you've yeah. never if you've never read a bit theater, that's an absolute treat, and you should definitely go ahead and check that one out. Um, just be prepared for a lot and a lot and a lot of reading because it's a very texty comic, but it's I've never read anything more clever, honestly, than a bit theater. I've always seen the ad. I've always seen the ad on Game Cola. I will read it. <laughs> yeah. Per, per oh. your plug. <laughs> oh, fuck the we plug. Uh, hey, go to. Uh, also, I'll be in the glass menagerie. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. Wanna wanna buy some rat poison? I got the best stuff. Um. So yeah, this is fun. Um. Oh, we've been going for forty minutes now. Um. Yeah. What else? Let's talk about games. Let's talk about games. Let's talk about. Um, yeah. Nathan went to PAX. Nathan went to PAX. I hate it. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Hydro Thunder Hurricane. Anyone a Hydro Thunder fan? Wow, not particularly. <laughs> not, not particularly, no. Seriously? <laughs> you guys never played Hydro Thunder in an arcade? Come on. You guys are older than me. You should have enjoyed the arcade still. I don't, I'm younger than you. I, I, I played Hydro Thunder, I think. It was, it was on the, it was, it was on the, it was like that, you had the little ski, jet ski and you, you, the like, on a water course, does it? Not a jet ski. No? Okay. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> ah, you made me angry. 
I, I think. I don't know. <laughs> don't quote me on that. I, I, I was actually season. surprised. I was surprised to see Hydro Thunder on anyone's list for the top 50, and I doubt it. was on my list. Back. Yeah, I know. I know. I thought I saw it on yours. I was like, oh, Hydro Thunder. Yeah. I mean, but um, they're making a lot of the development team is back, and they're making a sequel for the Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, it's going to be eight tracks, and it's going to be at least summer, and it's going to be everything I ever dreamed of because I've been wanting the Hydro Thunder sequels. That was a baby. So great. That's awesome. You and the other six people are going to be so psyched. Yeah. Hey, fuck <laughs> <it. laughs> oh man. Laugh it up. Buzzball. <laughs> I get the Star Wars quotes all the time. Oh yeah, speaking of which, they didn't they just they just canceled that Battlefront three uh, again. They're they're making a Battlefront three for uh, for the next gen hey. systems, but it got shelved. It closed. Yeah. That's a yeah. shame. That is. Did they state any kind of reason? Uh, because uh, the development studio closed. Oh. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> that, that would be a reason. <laughs> okay. Um, how are you guys? How's your day been going? <laughs> All right. Um, let me think here. I just asked you a question. Don't ignore me. <laughs> I'm I'm doing fine. I have exempt, just like you. I think. Me <laughs> exams. <laughs> Actually, I did have a pre calc test yesterday that I did not know I had, and I skipped class all week. So, um... <laughs> remember, kids, stay in school, <laughs> or you'll end up like that. Well, hey, hey. I mean, <laughs> it was a Gen F thing to do to help me get on broad. Well, whenever, you know, next time you're standing, you know, over a cliff with, you know, your arch nemesis poking a sword at you and you didn't know, you know, solve for, solve for C to leap off to the uh, passing train, you'll, you'll remember these days you missed pre-cal and you'll regret it. I don't think I, I'm going to put that, we're going to have it in the department of my Good story, though. Good try. <laughs> uh. I'm looking at the topics here now. Um, so you guys played Mega Man Nine, right? I did. did. All right. What did you think of it? Did you like it? Thought it was uh, cash in or what? I Thought played through hard. about five minutes. I played through five minutes, and I found the programmers uh, they mistook challenging with being a total asshole <laughs> because every time I jumped over any kind of pit, they would throw me the hell in it. Oh yeah, and it was after. After falling in a pit about 38 times, I said, up yours. I'm playing a different game. You can go to hell. Yeah. Yeah, I remember some, yes, yeah, so, yeah, some parts were like on the level of, I want to be the guy, kind of hard. Like, I think this one time where you're like, yeah. Like, we're, we're this one time where you're like, you're trying to go for this ladder. Like, it was like, oh, it's an underwater level. I can't remember now. Um, you're going to go for this ladder, and if you go, you know, you go too far to the to the r the left, you know, this robot picks you up and drops you one of the spikes. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of instant kill traps all yeah. over. Yeah, and the games were always they were always challenging and difficult, but they were never just total pricks. Yeah, the, the game did quite literally like it should have. I I was expecting the game to like give me in like an eight bit version of like the middle finger at that point because yeah, just really that's pretty much what the game was. Yeah. I think if you laid out all the maps for the game, that's the shape it would take. Yeah. So, Mega Man 10, I assume you're not going to check out 10? Uh, no, it's not on top, on the top of my priority list, no. It's not an easy boat, now. They have an easy boat. I'm all man. I'm all man. I don't play yeah. easy mode. Yeah, you don't play easy mode. <laughs> yeah, dude. Come on. I just don't play. Never. I just, I just throw a little fit and I don't play it. Always, it's always hard for me. That did not come out right. <laughs> Anyways, that is extra manly. <laughs> uh, uh, any 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 upcoming games you guys looking forward to? Like fifty. I mean, let's see. There's Metroid Dread. There's Super Street Fighter Four. 
There's a uh, Green Day rock band. There's really for that. Okay. <laughs> there's a whole mess of uh, uh, live arcade games. Uh, the Behemoth's next title. Uh, there's Mario. There's Metroid. I said. Um, there's Portal Two is later this year. I am looking uh, forward to that. That oh, and yeah. Red Dead Redemption. Yes, definitely Red Dead Redemption and Portal Two. That's, Valve that's have never top done me. Yeah, Valve, Valve have never done me wrong. No. I think it's impossible that producers do wrong at this point. Like, I don't they know. They just they, refuse to. They put so much work into their games. Yeah. Everything, everything, like, even Left 4 Dead. Like, I, I like Left 4 Dead, but, no, you know, not as much as, like, Team yeah. Fortress 2, but yeah, I can still see, I can still see, like, the the effort and the, you know, just, just the, so many little hits that they put in everything. It's just, you know, it's really good. Yeah. It's so quality. And you listen to their commentary that they put on those games, you're like, Jesus, they just... They think of everything. Everything is very, very, uh, very much done on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's uh, the only, the, probably the only company who is, is successful at putting out sequels that don't suck compared to the original. Yeah, in fact, they usually only get better. Yeah. Which is why I want to mention Bioshock 2, which is... didn't really do the first game justice. Animal. It seemed it seemed like it didn't know what the philosophy was. Like, it's all a spoof of Atlas Shrugged, which is just kind of like uh, laissez-faire government and stuff. And then the first Bioshock kind of played like an extra page at the end of that that said, "Oh, disregard that. I'm a moron." Yeah. And then this one, this one was just kind of like, yeah, I don't know, maybe yeah, it didn't, Ayn Rand was right. Yeah, it didn't know what I wanted to do, so that, that was kind of the big problem with the narrative. It, yeah. It's like, like I, I get what they took from the first game. The second game, I, they tried to go into a little bit of like redemption and whatnot, but that's not as interesting of a topic as you know, big government and you know, uh, you know the uh, you know, every man worked for himself and everything, and that kind of, yeah. like, kind of fall apart. But. I thought it was fun, but on the whole, it seemed very much like a sequel. Yeah, definitely wearing its sequel pants the whole time. Yeah. I thought the multiplayer was kind of fun. Oh yeah, the multiplayer is pretty good. Um, That's all right. I, I think they could do more with the whole like you have your own apartment. Like I'm, I was like what I think I'm like I'm level eleven now, and um, like so far the only new things that are happening is like you know I get I get occasionally get new messages and I occasionally like figure out more about the character I'm playing as, but nothing nothing big happens. There's no explosions. Yeah. Or there's no you know. There's Although no, I did like, think a more apt name, a more apt name for the multiplayer would have been first guy to get the big daddy suit wins. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Well, no, if you, if you gang up on enough people in Bioshock 2, like, if you if you don't know how to do it, like, I I think I've gotten pretty good at taking down big daddies, or at least, like, doing sufficient damage so that the next guy can do it, which is often the case. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a war of attrition. Yeah. Even the beginning, I didn't really, like, the beginning was kind of like, like the, the first part of Bioshock, that was like all interactive. It was all first person, everything. But the intro to Bioshock Two, you know, it's a cutscene basically. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of weird. Yeah. One of the topics here says emulation, yay or nay. I don't know what that means. Like for or against, I guess. Yeah, for or against, I guess. Emulation. What's wrong with emulation? I don't get it. The legality, I guess, the morality and legality, legality of it. Well, legal. Yeah, like, who's... I'm downloading the 90s Batman series right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think on, on a moral standpoint, I know it's, I know the difference between right and wrong, and I'd say that's probably wrong. I, I just don't care. It's because I, I love care. free. I'm not gonna pull that bullshit where I just keep oh I just keep the ROMs for 24 hours to evaluate them. No, no, I don't. Well, oh. I mean, for all it's certain oh, games man. like oh. what? I just hear a duck. <laughs> yeah. Just... Zach, are you okay? Sorry. Why twice? I'm... You're not. All right. I think he's I think he's in talks with Aflac to shill for them. Podcast. Right here. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, so emula 
simulation. Uh, not a big problem. I don't see what the big problem is. I mean, they're old, old NES games, you know. Like, yeah. And Nintendo's being a douche about releasing all of it anyways, so, you know. And how else am I, I supposed to play Bound? Yeah. Oh, Mother 3. When are they ever going to release that? Uh, they're not. Probably not. First that was your first ever release, I think. Oh, you Japanese. Ah! Uh, well, you just witnessed the death of a man on here the podcast, so uh, tune in next week then for no. Zach, are you over there? <laughs> My cell phone! Stop making fun of me! I'm not making fun of you, you're just you're making random noises, you're shouting into the mic. Think... You know, this is a Silent Hill game. It sounds like Xbox Live, actually. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this is terrible. I can't find my cell phone. That's that's fantastic, Zach. Um, no, I said it's terrible. Oh, okay. That, that's that's terrible then, I suppose. That's like when Lex Luthor scored forty-eight. Oh, when that's when Lex as, that's as many as four tens. That's terrible. Or or as bad as when Lex Luthor became president. Oh, wait. There's another topic I see on the list here. He sent me games which should have sequels but do not. Yeah, Force Gemini. What? What? Jet Force Gemini. Je- oh, Jet Force Gemini. Oh yeah, totally. That's a game that deserved a better fate. <laughs> the stupid tribal type quest. Yeah. That's just a common theme with a lot of rare games. That they're, the, fir- the first iteration is always awesome, and the second one, or the second one generally, uh, yeah. Well, you bad not rare. What? Don't I'm not hating on. I'm not hating on rare. I love rare. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You, can you just disgrace their name. Oh no! Don't don't get me wrong. Like I played like the shit out of Perfect Dark and Banjo Kazooie and uh, and Goldeneye and uh, you know and Banjo Kazooie even Banjo Tooie but Perfect Dark Zero that that's a lot to answer for not so much I swear to God I'm gonna kill someone if I don't find my cell phone <laughs> this is nearly the press uh, another game should have a sequel uh, Okami Okami was a really undervalued game that. It's one of the, another one of those stories of the game industry where it should have had a much better faith than it did because nobody bought it. A real psychonauts problem with that, where no one bought it and it's so good. Yeah. For sequels, uh, you know, I think Soul Blazer met a fate that it probably shouldn't have for this SNES. Oh, Soul Blazer. I remember Soul Blazer. I love that game. That was awesome. Yeah. Never heard of that. Very good. Very good game. Uh, you like, you kill enemies and. You kind of kill the base they kind of come out of, kind of like Gauntlet, and then you release the souls of these people that they abducted or whatever, and it get it gets you further in the story. It's it's a real good game. It could be done very well nowadays. I don't know. There's a lot they're of other really, really brought forth the discussion. I can see. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, no, Soul Blazer was awesome. Um, I, I wish actually wish board games were like that. Like, uh, I mean, more of that. Like you, you kill things, and you, you, you know, your your killings result in you actually building a base. Like I don't know why MMO, MMOs haven't picked that up. Like I would love a World of Warcraft where, like my money or my my killing would actually work towards building this awesome tower where I can have like wenches at every turn. You know, I do like wenches, and I do like killing. Nice. Be awesome. Do you guys? What did you say, Zach? I said I can't find myself. Oh, really? <laughs> Oh, you guys play Mass Effect 2? I did. You did? Alright. Are you guys getting the, the DLC Kasumi? Stolen Memory? Not until it lowers the public price. Seven bucks for 45 minutes of gameplay is not a good idea. Yeah. And I already traded off the game on uh, Goose Eggs. <laughs> so. Goose Eggs. Oh, goose Eggs. What is this Goose Eggs you're talking about? The Goosex, Goosex, the really unfortunately named game trading site. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I don't know, I, 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 might, I might might have picked it up. I don't know. I, I, I was liking the whole free DLC thing they had going on for um, for a little Zayn. while. You know, for Zayn yeah, Zayn. And such. Yeah. Zayn. Yeah, it's weird that they brought him in, but you can't actually talk to Zayn. You just sort of poke him, and then he babbles on about a story where he killed some Turian or whatever. It's like for an hour. Yeah, I wonder if it's but like it, that for all the DLC characters. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like that for the way too. I guess that means you're not going to get her naked, then. Yeah. Uh, that was okay. the point. Yeah, that's the point. You don't get to see anybody naked. It's a little rip. You don't even get to see anybody naked in Mass Effect 2. It was a horrible game. Yeah, Failure. This game sucked. Yeah, I know, totally. I think about awesome gameplay and intriguing storyline. <laughs> Overrated. Overrated. Pixelated Poontang. I need my side pool. Yes, we all have a great desire for side boob. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even see Tali's face. No, you didn't see her face. <laughs> yeah. I actually somebody saw someone did like a freeze cam of like the, the Mass Effect 2. Um like like it like you can you can have, you basically just go into the game and then you know take a like a set up a like an internal video camera. And yeah, basically when she takes off her mask, it just reveals another mask, so <laughs> Very funny, Bioware. We, we, <laughs> just, I like that. Yeah. I'm going to rip my room apart right now trying to find my cell phone. This is, is that right? Yeah. Almost. I guess, I guess I'm my cell phone too. I am. As fast. Yeah, are, I, yeah, Zach, are you, like, are you really that excited for Green Day Rock Band? I mean, isn't this enough? Like, um, I mean, I love Rock Band. So, I mean, it's the next portable set, but, so, I'll just get the achievements and get the songs, and I'll be happy. Well, that, that's good, but I mean, like, how many rock bands, like, are, are we going to have, like, a rock band, you know, uh, Our Lady Peace next, or a rock band? Like, when, when's enough? <laughs> I would kill for a rock band Our Lady Peace, okay? Don't even joke about that. <laughs> a rock band Nirvana. If there was a rock band Nirvana, I would die happy. <laughs> I really wouldn't be too surprised to see that one. No, no, it'd be, it'd be a... Well, I mean, they already have all the different bands on rock band, though. So they only have two more out. Oh, yeah. But they do have, have kind of a Tupac thing going on, where they just keep digging out old masters and such. So maybe they could fill a whole game with these new, these new songs. Sure. Uh, the demo isn't really recording. And like, I remember they came out with You Know You're Right in 2002. Um, and the live at reading disc that came out last year. It depends. It's a living. <laughs> are you guys excited for, uh, StarCraft 2? Are you, are you guys gonna get it or has it been like way too long with, you know, nothing to show for it? <laughs> I'll do it. I've never been a Star... I don't think I've ever played StarCraft, honestly. Zach? Never played StarCraft. Never played it? Never played it. Never played oh, okay. Oh, well, that went nowhere. <laughs> Look at us, we are so well-versed in video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I can't believe I'm the only one who's played StarCraft. I mean, that, isn't that like a standard... Isn't that what you need to play if you're a gamer? I, I know, uh, you'd think so. you think that's 101, but yeah. I've never, never played that one. Nah. I don't know, I've never considered people who just played like Mario or Pac-Man as gamers. Like that's, that's like, you know, everybody's played, you know, Super Mario Brothers or Pac-Man or whatever. So. I, I figure StarCraft is one of those games, but if you're a gamer, you've played it, but I don't know. Actually, here's something interesting about it. Have, have you guys heard about the, the Gygus Theory? No. It's it's just one of these weird theories that the internet just tends to breed. I'm the entire so battle. Oh, thank God. Found it. Everything's better. Right, the awesome. world right. may continue. Anyway, the world may continue. Thanks. The uh, the theory is that the entire battle with Gygus is a metaphor for an abortion. <laughs> and and at first I thought that's rather macabre and probably stupid. 
But you know, you start you start listening to all the points, and it almost makes sense. Uh, for example, you have to go back in time and fight him in a weaker state. The entrance to the cave he lives in is a little bit vaginal, maybe not completely Georgia O'Keefe, but a little vaginal. And then uh, all the floors you walk on, going up to Gygus, they, they look kind of like internal organs. And the devil's machine looks very much like a cervix. And the entire dialogue that Gygus spews out to the whole thing is based on a rape scene the, uh, the guy saw in a movie. Mm. Very, very interesting. It's a, good, little, good. it's a little strange. Yeah. Oh, and good also, and if you freeze frame, if you freeze frame Gygus and kind of trace out like this one portion of Gygus, it looks kind of like uh, the silhouette of a child, of like a baby. Normally, no. normally I would dismiss it out of hand, but it's kind of a weird game, and he's kind of a weird <laughs> guy, and it's Japan. Yeah, maybe. Uh, is, it, couldn't it, that same be. logic technically apply to, like, most Final Fantasy games? Maybe. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking about one, have to go back in time, you know, to fight a, you know, fight Garland in, like, a weaker state, you know, or, uh... Or Terminator. Yeah. Or, <laughs> fi or you know, fi finding the, finding the... Finding the four light orbs? Uh? No? Orbs? The Devil's Machine is pretty cervical. There's some insight into Earthbound for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still angry about Mother 3, and hopefully at some point Nintendo will come to their senses. I know. Instead have of you releasing... The, uh, did you play the fan translation? I have not played the fan translation, no. I probably should, but... It's excellent. It's very good. Probably should release it instead of releasing, putting a character from a game we've never actually played into a fighting game and then release it over. <laughs> and putting all kinds of spoilers in that game. Putting, yeah, spo all kinds of spoilers in the game and then setting it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you um, kindly, Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo is the big, world's biggest cockies. They really are. Yeah. You just, every year uh, that passes, you just can't help but feel bad for Starman.net. Star what? Starman.net, the big Earthbound community that's constantly pushing to have new Earthbound games released. Yeah, okay. I don't yeah. Know. I, 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 I just feel bad about that in general. I don't know if I know about Starman, but... Yeah. Yes, yeah. So I think with a lot of Japanese games, like Yakuza, the Yakuza series, which is really big, I just actually reviewed it, um, it's really big in Japan, you know, and, and over here, like, even they just released Yakuza 3, and for some reason, they cut out, like, the, like, the hostess clubs and, like, some of the side missions because apparently the, you know, the American audience wouldn't get them. I think we could understand it in context. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we'd understand what it is. I think we'd yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean. But it's a game about, I mean, it's a game where, you know, this guy with the huge ass dragon tattoo goes around beating up, you know, punching tigers while half naked. I mean, I think we can throw, like, cultural similarities out the window at that point. Yeah, that's got America written all over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you really want to, want to westernize it, just make him give, like, some kind of one liner every time he throws a punch and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Duke Duke of Forever. <laughs> it's really coming this time. Yeah, it's, it's really coming. Did you guys actually... There's like a trailer floating around the internet, um, actually now, of, of apparently new Duke Duke of Forever footage. <laughs> I, don't know if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen it yet. What I've heard is that uh, uh, one of the lead designers on the project was doing like a question and answer session over the internet about the game and how they fucked it up. Yeah, they actually had a big article in Wired recently. Really? About, yeah, about how the, basically the reason it failed is just because they had too much money and no guy in charge was just a perfectionist nut. So he'd be like, get this engine, I want it to look the best, then a new engine would come out. He'd say, scrap the whole thing, we're doing it over with this engine. And they would just keep upgrading and upgrading and upgrading, and it just went nowhere. And they lost all their money upgrading it. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, but to be honest, I would... I, I wouldn't mind, I mean, all would be forgiven if they actually released it, because honestly, I want to play a shooter game again where I can have, you know, more guns than fingers, you know? Yeah. 
I, I miss that day. I miss Having those days. Fun. Trust me. Um, okay. So we had some laughs and some love and some lows. And I found my cell phone. But that's, that's all the time we have today on this lovely game full of podcasts. So, um, I hope you kids have a safe trip home. Wear a condom. And, uh, get your pet spayed and neutered. Pepper. And, uh, we will see you next time. Anyone else have some last words? Uh, two st- more than two strokes is playing with yourself. Okay. <laughs> That's a good well, way to end it. Looks like we're right, bringing uh, that to the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is getting awkward again. Okay. Have a safe night, everybody. Good night.